Welcome back to Area Diesel Service, your diesel expert since 1973. Today we're going to bring you some collaborative content with fellow YouTuber Tractor Time with Tim. Several months ago we were working the Farm Progress show. Tim and Christy approached our booth and said they wanted to add a turbo to their 1025R. Custom turbo installation is not really something that we do at Area Diesel Service. But, we're in the infancy of a YouTube channel, and Tim obviously has a pretty good YouTube channel. There was an opportunity to collaborate, get some content out there that we thought was going to be interesting and exciting. Several weeks later, Tim brought us his 1025R for what was to be a one-off turbocharger installation. That's what we did. We got the machine, and we started poking and prodding. So you've seen several updates on Tim's channel throughout the process of developing this modification. There's quite a bit that goes into something like this. Several folks involved, machine shop, development and programming, paper templates, cutting and welding, tacking stuff together, fabbing stuff up to develop what we felt was a pretty clean and professional installation here. After several weeks and, and many hours of work, we arrived at what we felt was the solution here. We've captured the installation of this turbocharger and we want to share that with you now. Okay everybody, this is the time that we put this thing on for the last time, hopefully. Just to go over some things that we've made on this was repositioning the turbine housing by redrilling it, tapping it, so we can orientate it to where we want. Of course the oil inlet fitting on here, the oil drain fitting that you can see. I've left this loose for alignment purposes once we get it on then we'll snug it up when it's lined up with the hose and the piece on the valve cover. Also they've made in our machine shop the bracket for the actuator and due to the size of the actuator we needed to space it up off the compressor housing to keep our alignment for the wastegate flapper here. So basically the wastegate what it does is controls the speed of the turbo by opening and controlling this flapper valve here in the back which bypasses the exhaust from going around the turbine wheel and just dumps it out to the exhaust pipe. So we currently have this preset right now at uh, five pounds of boost. I'll set this aside and we'll start with the installation here. We're going to start with the valve cover. For testing purposes we have put a boost tap in the intake part of this valve cover. You can see the fitting that we've welded into the valve cover here and the angles that it is at to line up with the drain on the turbo. Let's get this started. I did put a new o-ring under here, or a gasket, since we welded on it, took the old one in and out. I wanted to start with the new one here. I've wiped down the intake, or the head. Okay, now we'll put our O-ring in here and we'll put this breather on that I've got laying up in here. Okay, so I've got this sitting in here so we don't accidentally drop something into the intake manifold. Let's now go on to the turbine housing pedestal or the turbo pedestal. Dusty designed this and Gary machined this back in the machine shop as we've showed it to you a few times already. And we have modified the stock shield that goes on this. We've basically scalloped this out a little bit so it would go over the, the uh, pedestal that we have here. All right, 
now we have our gasket between the pedestal and the turbo. I also want to go ahead and put this oil drain hose on there because we'll be coming down at an angle to get to that. Alright, so we get the gasket in place. There's a stud that goes in the front, or the side here I should say, the front towards me. Guide the stud in, guide the hose into the oil drain, get that started, and then get the bolts in here. We have to use this small high torque nut on the stud due to the clearance that we have around it to be able to get a wrench on it. Okay, so now we have our oil drain hose here, but now that we have everything lined up, I'm going to come in and tighten our, our oil drain flange here and in the back. Okay, now that we have the drain tube tight, we're going to tighten up these hose clamps. That line up a little better. Okay, let's work on the oil line. Which, from the previous video, you saw where we tapped into the side of the block down there. Now that we have the oil line hooked up, the drain lines hooked up, and since this is such a small hole, it's very hard to pre-lube, I disconnected the fuel shutoff solenoid on here so we can crank the engine and get some oil pressure up on this thing before we go ahead and let it start. And I want to do that step right now because I can still get to the connector down there. All right, let's hit this a couple times and get some oil pressure. That ought to be getting some oil in the turbo. Fuel solenoid again while we can still get to it fairly easily. So that when we get ready, hopefully it'll start. All right, let's put the air intake hoses on here. There's not a really a great way of order of operation. Okay, that should be that. I don't move along to putting our air pipe on. Make sure we have clearance in the back, which it appears that we do. Here, our compressor discharge is on. Oil lines are done. Let's go to the exhaust here. The gasket back here. Basically, this is just a transition cover plate, flange, whatever, to go to the exhaust pipe. 
And as we pointed out in the parts video, this was part of the original exhaust pipe that we cut apart, pieced together to have this exhaust pipe formed and fit. So it's all one piece and looks much better than that one. So we have clearance on our alternator pulley. Everything else should be lining up here. Okay, so everything's here is tight, 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 not tight. Well, are you ready to hear it run? So am I. Well, here we go. Once we got all the parts developed and manufactured, 
The installation is relatively simple, but there's a lot more that went into it, obviously, than, than just bolting the stuff on. So you'll have to keep an eye on Tim's channel to see how this thing performs, what the real-world scenarios are, performance characteristics, longevity. Again, this is not really the type of work that we do at Area Diesel Service. We thought this was an interesting, fun challenge that would provide some quality content for both our viewers and for Tim's viewers. Exhibition, one-off type of project in the name of exposure and content. So that's the motive. That's why we've brought this to you. What we really do at Area Diesel Service is diesel fuel injection component repair as well as turbocharger component repair and distribution. So we are a rebuilder and service shop for these components and we are a parts distributor for these items. Much to our surprise, the amount of feedback for people looking for more power out of these machines was pretty surprising to us. Generally, Area Diesel, you might consider us 100 horsepower and up in the agricultural world. We also do on-road, over-the-road, construction, mining, basically all things diesel. We are not really participating in the subcompact tractor world and we were surprised that there's as many gearheads there as there is in the markets that we participate in. A lot of you folks looking for ways to get safe power increases from those machines have contacted us. One of the product lines that we can share with you is our own brand of Agricultural Diesel Solutions Performance Modules. I'll show you a couple of samples here today. We'll also link you to the catalog of this. I think we're up to about 125 part numbers with significant coverage in the agricultural world and especially in the subcompact world. We have coverage there. So this particular module is part number KUB3304, 3.3 liter Kubota. In the Kubota world, we're talking about module coverage on 3.3, 3.8, and 6.1 liter Kubota engines. Still not the smallest of the small. A lot of the smaller stuff runs mechanical fuel injection and it has to be an electronically fueled engine for a module to be applicable. A much easier and safer way to get performance increases in your tractor. We call this a performance module. It's a relatively Simple installation, couple of connectors, we use the factory style connectors, power and ground, mount the module, you've got a dial on here to select your performance increases. For many of you that have contacted us, this has been the solution that we have offered. We've done these for many years. This is a quality product, safe and proven. It has a 30 day, no questions asked, money back guarantee. It's got a lifetime warranty, it does not defeat or delete any emissions components. We've got a variety of them for your different machines. Again, we've got about 125 part numbers and we're covering engines from 1.6 liter Yanmar up to 24.2 liter MAN. Pretty diverse coverage in the performance module applications. That's a wrap. We appreciate you coming over and checking out our video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. If you're in need of the types of services that we do provide, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You can call us at 800-637-2658. You can email us at parts at areadiesel.com. You can chat with us instantly through our website, areadieselservice.com. You can chat with us immediately in the Chat Now button in the bottom right-hand corner of our website. You can stop by our locations in Carlinville, Illinois, Pleasant Hill, Iowa, or Indianapolis, Indiana. So, if you would, give us a like or subscribe to our channel. Share it with your friends. Let us know your thoughts. We want to thank Tim and Christy for reaching out to us and giving us the opportunity to collaborate with them. Uh, we always love doing collaborations and we're looking for more content to work on there. Thanks for watching.